You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. So excited you could join me here today on this Motivation and Mindset Monday. I hope it's going to be a great show for you. I'm excited to talk with you about this topic, and that's because when I'm trying to help people improve in any area of their life, I always relate it back to exercise or trying to get well. And I think we can look at that. We can really use that in any area of our life. And that's because there are certain things that you need to do for your body in order to change its shape or in order for it to get well that you can then transfer over to the rest of your life. And so that's why the tagline for the Cabral concept since its inception has always been change your body, change your life. And I'm not going to talk to you today about how to change your body or why you should change your body or why you should change your health or improve your health. What I want to do, though, is give you the concept that I've been using now myself personally for two decades and in my practice for almost about the same amount of time is uh, and how to improve any area of your life and how to do it in a step-by-step fashion. Because right now, I honestly believe the reason why most people haven't gotten what they want out of life is because they're too overwhelmed at what they have to do meaning the possibilities are endless, so they can't decide what they truly want out of life. And if they have decided it, it's oftentimes too vague. It's like, oh, well, I just want to be happy. Oh, I just want to be financially free. Oh, I just want to be healthy. Oh, I just want to, you know, I want to get the body that I want. Well, what does that mean? So they, they first, they have to refine that. And I'm not going to go over that part of the process as well today, because I've spoken about that. If you go back to a previous Mindset and Motivation Monday on the SMART-based protocol or the SMART formula. If you check that out, we also posted it inside of the cabralsupportgroup.com. You'll see exactly how to get very specific on the goals that you want working on one area of your life at a time. So simply go back, listen to previous Mindset and Motivation Mondays at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. They're always indicated by the MM. So I'm not going to tell you what your goal should be, but what I want to tell you is that Once you've refined that goal, then you get overwhelmed at all the things that you should do right to reach that goal. But oftentimes as well, you you get overwhelmed that you started too late or that there's just too much. There's too much to learn. There's too much to do. And it provides or actually causes you anxiety. And that's not what I want either because you know what? The thought in the back of your head of everything that you want to achieve to live up to your full potential will never go away. You can keep trying to bury it. You can keep trying to push it down. But the problem is this. It's always going to pop back up. Maybe not every week or every month, but every year, right around, let's say, after summer, we get back into that work schedule, back into that back to school schedule, kind of like we're doing right now. Or every time January 1st rolls around, you know that that signal, that marker, especially that date for the new year is going to come and your mind is going to say from a subconscious standpoint, should we try to create new goals? Should we start to go after those things that you've always wanted out of life? And this is another big thing, and I've spoken about this many times, is that you can't look back 10 years from now, 20 years from now, or the end of your life and say, I didn't give it my all. I didn't give it my best. You don't have to achieve everything that you set out for in life, but you have to give it your best. You have to try to reach your potential, and you have to set goals that you feel they're important to you. That you know, the act of going after that goal makes you change into the type of person that you want to be. It's such an important concept is that the goal is oftentimes irrelevant. It's the amount of work that you need to do on you internally in order to achieve the goal. And I've, I've talked about this as well, and I think this is a really important topic. The way that I got well was to do so much work on myself, right? 
And that's oftentimes for someone that's very, very sick, is that you need to work on the body from many, many different levels. And I spoke about this in the rain barrel effect on how you need to work on the emotional, right? You need to work on the mindset. Yes, you need to work on your health. You need to work on all of the different areas so that when you begin to get well again, you don't relapse because that was the problem. I started to get well and then I'd relapse. I started to get well and then I'd relapse. And that's because I always wanted to go back to the person I was previously. And so here's the problem. When you go after new goals, they don't always stick either. That's a really important point. And that's what I see a lot of times in my practice. I let people know that success is oftentimes and almost never is at a straight line. You know, you can get well, you can lose the weight, but it's hard to make it stick. And that's simply because there's still a what's called a cognitive dissonance between where you want to be and where you're currently at in life. So for example, let's say that you go on a, go on a diet program, a nutrition program, an exercise program, and your goal is to lose 20 pounds. Well, I believe most people should be able to lose that 20 pounds in about 12 weeks or so, maybe 16 at the very most, because that's an easy one and a half to two pounds of weight loss per week, you know, ongoing. And yes, in the beginning, you'll probably lose five to, you know, maybe even 10 pounds your first week. I mean, that would be a lot if you only have 20 pounds to go, but you'll lose at least five pounds, maybe seven that first week. And then it'll be like three pounds to maybe five pounds. And after that, about a pound and a half or so per week. So when you look at that, okay, great. But oftentimes you achieve the goal And you say, okay, now I want to go back to how I was living before. No, you can't do that. So the way that you lost the weight is that you started to live in hopefully a healthier lifestyle. You started to eat a more anti-inflammatory nutrition plan. You started to detoxify the body. You started to get those three days or more per week of exercise. You started to do your 10,000 steps per day of walking. You know, you worked up to those. But the problem is you can't go back to the more sedentary lifestyle. You can't go back to eating every day those cookies and muffins and pastries and all those different types of things, right? You can still enjoy a flex meal once or twice a week. There's no doubt about that once you've reached your goal. Absolutely true. You get to enjoy some of those things as well. And of course, you can take a couple days off from exercise, of course. But what you can't go back to is the previous you and expect to keep the same results. That's one of the issues that I see. But remember, You try to explain that to people, and I try my very best, but when I'm thinking about it, I still believe that we all need to go through it. But the problem is, or I should say the benefit is this, once you've already heard it and then you go through it, you're like, oh yeah, you know, he was right or she was right. Now I see, you know, I did slide back. Okay. Well now guess what? Now this is what I call the recalibration phase. This is where you get to understand that if you want to keep the results you need to stay on track. Now, again, you'll get back on track. You'll get back. You'll reach your goals again. Weight loss is an easy one. So let's just stick with that topic. So now you're at your ideal weight. And I always say, keep that buffer about five pounds, right? Never let yourself get more than five pounds away from your goal weight. And that's because five pounds is easy to lose. You can lose that in one seven-day Dr. Ball detox or seven days of whatever your favorite plan is, whatever it might be, right? And then you're back to that weight at any time. So I I always give that for people like that's the buffer. I do that for myself as well. And you already know like, oh, I'm sliding too much. I need to get back on track before things get completely out of control, right? So now it's within my control. I can go back to that. Well, here's one more point about that is even knowing that oftentimes there'll be something that pops up in your life and you slide once again. But I always say this. You now have the blueprint because you've done it multiple times for how to get back to where you should be at in life. So once you have that blueprint, you can always go back to that because you have to remember that life will throw you curveballs every once in a while. And that doesn't mean that you need to let it set you off track for more than a couple weeks or so. But the bottom line is you did it. You know, once you achieve that goal, you know how to get it back. And that's a great thing. So now that we know that, Remember, if it's health, if it's weight loss, there's an answer for everyone. There really is. And of course, that's what we specialize in, right? We specialize in whether it's digestive-based, autoimmune-based, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, weight loss, hormones, balancing hormones, children's health, whatever that is. You know, if, if the body's unhealthy, that's what we're specializing in. And of course, we can help you with that. But you can also look for someone that, that specializes in some type of integrative practice that isn't using just bioidentical hormones because we're calling that now integrative medicine. 
using bioidentical hormones is not integrative medicine. It's not. It's now using hormones as a pharmaceutical and not looking at balancing the underlying conditions that created the hormone imbalance in the first place. Do I have a problem with a short-term use of bioidentical hormones? Not really. Um, I do start to have an issue when we start to use testosterone and estrogen for sure, but some DHEA, some progesterone from a natural-based source, I have no problem with that for short-term use or potentially later in life. But that's a topic for another day. What, I'm to- what I ask you to look for, though, is a practitioner who specializes in you know, true integrative functional medicine lab testing, not just blood work. Blood work is fine. It's great. We use it as well, but it's only one marker. We want to look at saliva testing. We want to look at urine testing for certain markers. So all of those are important. Why am I going on about this topic of health and and body transformation? Because I still truly believe that although we don't specialize in helping people get the career they want, helping people get the relationship they want, helping them find the spiritual-based path that they want, What we do is set them up for success in those areas because I believe the more energy you do have, the more vitality you have, the more positive your mood is, the easier it is to go after the career, the easier it is to find the right partner for you in life because you're going to be resonating on a different level, meaning your mood's going to be more positive. You're going to be more open to people around you. You're going to be more excited to meet those outside of your current sphere, right? And so that sets you up for that success. And also, spirituality, you're going to have a whole different mindset when you feel more at peace. And you're going to feel more at peace when your body's in the state that it should be, when it is balanced, when you've achieved equilibrium, right? The whole equilibrium nutrition concept that I came up with was based on dynamic equilibrium. And I talk about this in the rain barrel effect. Dynamic equilibrium is this. And I, again, Very few things in life have I made up. I'm an assimilator and hopefully a teacher of this type of information. But I read books from many hundred years, from many hundreds of years ago, specifically books right around the late 1800s and early 1900s. And I get them from all these great out of stock, or I should say out of print bookstores. And a lot of them are international books as well. It's one of my favorite things. And, you know, my wife knows this as well. She'll buy me these old, old paperback books uh, that I love for anniversaries and different things like that. It's one of my favorite gifts. And so, you know, those are things that I enjoy, but I enjoy reading it because the concepts were pure. There were no pharmaceuticals. There was nothing like that yet. And our job was based on how do we use nature? How do we use nature with herbs, but also just getting into nature, doing all these things, looking at, looking at the world around us before like massive technology took place? And how do we find equilibrium or balance? Well, this was it. As everyone always spoke about, and the great Tao, and, and really in Ayurveda, all of these things. And that's why, like someone said, I don't, 99% of people are very much enjoying the once a week Ayurvedic based series. But one person on Instagram said, you know, I'm not really enjoying it. I don't really get it. I don't understand it. It's this, it's this. And I said, I understand where you're coming from. But do understand that Ayurveda is the basis of all medicine. It is the basis of all medicine except conventional medicine. And even the herbs in Ayurvedic medicine, though, are studied and patented by pharmaceutical-based companies. When I was over in India, literally, there were pharmaceutical-based reps all in the foothills of the Himalayas, which is one part of India that I studied. And they were looking at herbs and working with the Vajas, which are the the doctors over there um, in Ayurvedic medicine, seeing which herbs do what for the body. And then their job is to try to patent it and make money off as a pharmaceutical. Well, we already know they work as an herb. We don't need to use them as a pharmaceutical, right? So here's the issue though, is it is by looking at overall Ayurveda, you're looking at your bio-individuality. And without that, you truly have nothing. Meaning like there's always the protocol that's going to work as the foundation. And then you're going to tweak it for your unique individuality. And the other part is, is just the concept that we are all humans. The body works in the same fundamental principles that my body is like your body. A male's body is like a female's body, except for some variations in terms of hormones and obviously anatomy, those types of things. But you have to understand is that the same basic premises are going to work for everyone. However, it needs to be tweaked based on where you're at in life, even based on your climate, the seasons, all of those things. 
And that's where the dynamic equilibrium comes into play, is that the great Tao, all these things around us have always said that the world is in flux, or it's always moving back and forth. It's never static. It's never stationary. And our body at all times is trying to create balance and equilibrium. So dynamic equilibrium means there's always a flux. It's always up and down like a teeter-totter. I always refer to it as a seesaw. From when you're little, it's up and down, up and down, always trying to create a level balance. And your body does that automatically until there's a deficiency of some type or a toxicity. And that's my main premise. That's what we look for, right? So with functional medicine lab testing, we're always looking for what is the deficiency? Or what is the toxicity? Of course, usually there's both. And so you find out what the deficiencies are and you replace them. And you find out what those toxicities are and you remove them from all possibilities. And the body then has more raw material to stay in balance and also has less toxicity to fight against. Or in Ayurveda, they call it atma, right? A toxicity. So now it's easier to stay balanced. And when you're more balanced, you can look at life differently. Because again, you're able to wake up with more energy. You're able to wake up without an alarm clock. If you lose a little sleep one night because of travel, well, you're not really trying to recover for the next three days or seven days. I work with a lot of people in my practice, and I used to be there myself, that if you lose even one night's sleep, it sets you back a week. So that's the problem. We want our body to be more flexible. We want it to be more even keel and at a state of equilibrium. That's the great thing. So as we're trying to get on track, though, and heal this body, this mind of ours as well, you know, looking at the mindset. What I want you to think about is this. I want you to write down those goals. It's so important, right? We're starting to start the next chapter of the year, the next part of the year. If you live in the if you live in Europe, if you live in the United States and in Canada and in the UK, we're moving from our warmer summer months in Europe, you know, you just most likely had holiday and you were off for a period of time, a period of weeks. It's now time to get back on track. We don't want to lose the whole last half of the year. So our job is this. Let's define one goal, maybe two. What is it that we want to achieve? We can achieve all of them. You know, Write down that bucket list if you want. I did a whole podcast on a great bucket list to create for yourself and the different categories. But I want you to do is choose that goal, but I want you to go about it a little bit differently. I want you to understand a concept that I want the rest of this show now to be focused on. And this is something called the graduated exercise program. It's something that I didn't know about when I was much younger, but I wish that I did. So the reason why is that this is something that's been shown to work exceptionally well, and I'll be talking about it more on a future podcast. But essentially what it means is your ability to gradually buffer stress. Okay. So I talked about this on my podcast, the four phases of exercise, like basically how to ramp yourself up. But what you're essentially doing in the short term is you're starting with walking, then you're eventually doing a little bit of cardio, then you're doing some type of resistance-based training, then you're doing harder interval-based you know, intense work after you've worked up to that. Well, what did I do? Well, I basically got the body. Now, I know the end goal. The end goal is to be able to exercise and to be able to run around and do sprints and, and play basketball and sports with your kids, even as, an, even as a grandparent, like all of those things. I think those are amazing goals. You want to get to that, but you can't get to that tomorrow. You can't even get to that next month. It's not going to work that way because the body is not ready to buffer that type of stress. So for me, I used to play sports every season. I would play three sports in high school. And when I got sick my senior year, I couldn't do any of them. I tried to come back in March of that year for spring sports for track. You know, I'd already missed my fall sports. I had missed my winter sport basketball. And I tried to get back for track. And I used to love track. I had a really great team that I was a part of. And, you know, we went to the States the year before, like all those really fun things. I loved it. I loved it for the camaraderie. You know, I was never going to win the Olympics, that's for sure. And I certainly wasn't going to get a scholarship in college either for, you know, for athletics. But it was something that I loved and I enjoyed doing. But here was the issue. I came back and I relapsed right away when I started to get back into track. And also, I didn't have the legs under me, meaning that I had no energy. I mean, literally, my coach was yelling at me because I was supposed to be someone you know, that was a performer on the team. And he had coached me for the past three years. And he, he was just saying, like, what are you doing? And I was mad at myself as well because I, I couldn't perform. So I ended up having to leave track and field that year, which is, of course, another blow to my ego. But I was part of the crushing of the ego. 
uh, around the, the 17, 18 year old mark, because by then, obviously, well, by then, in the springtime, I was just turning 18. That was very much crushing, but I didn't understand. When you come back from being quite unwell, like I was, you're not going to be able to dive right back in exercise, even if you had been doing that. It actually makes you worse. I relapsed because it was too much stress on my body. What I was supposed to do was gradually work my way up, then feeling the next day or two, am I sore? What's my level of soreness? Is it wiping my body out? Okay, that was too much. Let me ease back a little bit. Let me take a couple days off. Let me try it again. Was that the right amount? Yes, it was. Okay, let's try that for a couple weeks. Now let's increase the intensity or the duration, or let's add two days in a row of exercise. How did that feel? Okay, that was too much. Now let me go back to what I was just doing. Let me try it again in another couple weeks. So what you're doing is you're gradually moving up. But eventually now, or I just say, obviously now I'm to the point where I could do sprint triathlons, right? From someone with Addison's disease, keep in mind Addison's disease means that you're not producing cortisol. You're essentially not producing energy. You can't even fight back with stress. It was to the point that I would sit around at my kitchen table having dinner with my family. And I'm someone, as you know now, of course, who loves to talk. I talk, I mean, I literally talk for eight to 10 hours a day. That's no exaggeration. So as someone who loves to talk and does it for a living, whether it's in appointments, on a podcast, being interviewed by someone, speaking on stage, like all of these things that I love. This is what I do for a living, right? I mean, this is, well, this is what I do for a living. This is what I do for me. Like this is who I am. It has, a living is secondary to that. My job is, I consider to be a teacher. What do teachers do? Well, they teach either through books or through podcasts now that we have this great platform for that or videos, whatever it might be, right? But like, this is what it is. So now picture me at 17, 18 years old, sitting there thinking about even trying to say a sentence because of how exhausted I was. Like I was trying to form the words and I would think to myself, is it worth it to even speak because of how tired I was and that would take even more energy? It was that bad. It's hard to imagine. It's even hard to put into words. But the truth is that that was an absolute low point, right? And that wasn't who I was. And I knew who I wanted to be, which is who I am today. And so I had to then work on getting all that back. And obviously, as you see today, someone that can talk for eight to 10 hours a day or more, who can do three hours in a row that I've done for a specific seminar. I've done 12-hour day seminars for three days in a row. I don't even recommend that. And then doing sprint triathlons. The only reason I say that I'm back to this is because wherever you're at right now, there's hope for you too. And it's not just me. I don't have any superpowers at all. And I certainly don't even have the body type that would be able to buffer that type of stress in general. That's why I'm always working on it and balancing it with my Ayurvedic body type. The other part is this, is that it's not just me, like I said. It's many, many thousands of people, of course, in our practice, but it's millions of people all over the world working on getting themselves well, and they do get themselves well. So what I need you to think about is this. Whenever you're going for any goal in life, I need you to use this philosophy of a graduated exercise program. I need you to think about it because in the very beginning of this show, I spoke about the anxiety and overwhelm that comes with creating new goals for yourself, that comes with thinking about your potential and how you may not be reaching it. So you're going to think of that lofty goal that you have. We work with a lot of health practitioners. And towards the end of this month, we're going to be bringing on our first 100 practitioners into our new certification course. And it's going to be absolutely tremendous. This is going to be even more than a dream come true because I couldn't have even dreamed this before. So, you know, it's it's unbelievable that I'll be able to teach this and they'll be able to teach it to others or integrate it into their current practice or simply use this course as something they can use with their family and their friends and all of that. But here's what I want you to think about. Those goals that you might have for yourself, maybe you are thinking about becoming a health coach in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever it might be. We have people in their 60s who are signing up that I know for sure that are going to become health coaches. If you're in your 70s, I applaud you. Absolutely go for it. Because here's the thing, people need your help. But also I want you to think about this. I want to keep this on point right now, is that the thought is you could be overwhelmed of how will you ever be able to teach someone else? How will you ever get to the point where you know in-depth knowledge about health or weight loss or whatever your niche is, right? If you're in your 60s and you want to become a health coach, how great for you to have a niche in anti-aging that you can help your peers in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond, right? I mean, amazing. But the problem is we all get overwhelmed of the process. The process is actually simple. 
The process means you have to take it step by step. So what do you have to do? Well, you'd have to go through some type of certification. Certainly doesn't have to be the one that we're putting out. It could be anyone. But you're studying the material. The material that you study will then lead you to the next thing to study. Then you will gradually begin to implement it. As you begin to implement it, you'll learn what works and what doesn't work. Then you'll be able to further refine it. People will begin to hear about you, all the great work that you're doing, because you'll start to get referrals. Those referrals will continue to accumulate and you will build up your own practice. That's how it works. We've never once advertised. We don't advertise. We don't market. What we do is we try to provide really great care for one person. That's it. And every one person we work with is that one person. And then if they decide that we've done a great job, they will refer one more person or maybe two. And that is how you grow with anything in life. So what I did right there was I just broke this down for a health practitioner, but you can use this for anything. What about your career? Somewhere in your career, you're going to say, how do I advance to that next level? You're simply going to look at that next level above you, or maybe it's a different field completely. What would it take to get to that next level? What is the person above you in that position doing that you're not currently doing? What do they have? And then you'll look at how can I work up to that? Not get to that next month. How can I work up to that? Okay. And now what is that first step to take? Here's the interesting thing, because again, you can use this with any part of your life that you want, relationships, spirituality, weight loss, et cetera, is that you know your end goal, okay? I always knew my end goal. I had no idea how I would get there. I never, and, and a lot of times you don't even have to believe you'll get there. You can just kind of put it out there, right? Put it out there quietly to the universe, anything that you want to think about, maybe, maybe a confidant, but just, just put it out there, write it in a journal. You can just do that. Keep it private for right now. But think about this, is that you know that that's the end goal, but you know also, don't kid yourself, right? I love the law of attraction. I love all of those things. But you have to understand is that you also have to believe, right? You have to believe it's going to happen. Well, here's what you do know. I know that you believe you can take the next step, and that's all that I want you to do. And then what happens is after you take the next step, that's hard. The first step is hard, right? But then you learn all about it, and that becomes easy. Then you take the next step, and that's hard because you've never done it before, right? It's going to be hard because you've never done it before. Your body has to push outside of its comfort zone. But then you do that, and you're like, oh, well, that was easy too. And level one, that becomes simple because you already completed level two. Now you move on to level three when you're ready. Not when your friend's ready, your family's ready, your spouse is ready. No one else is ready except you. When you're ready, you move on to the next level. Well, now you're working your way up the rung, and every level is hard the first time you try it just like in a graduated exercise program. Walking is hard when you have no energy. A lot of people can't understand that. I used to think about every step that I took. I was that exhausted. Every step I had to think about, every single one, literally picking up my leg and moving it forward. Now, again, you don't consciously think about that, which is a good thing, right? But there are areas in your life that you need to improve on that would be different from me learning to walk again, right? But when I was able to walk, well, then I could start to build up a little cardio. Now, I did it incorrectly for many, many years, and that's why I suffered and relapsed for many, many years. But then I was able to then start some exercise. When I could do that, I relapsed again. I realized I was putting too much stress on my nervous system. But eventually, I was able to gradually and very slowly work up and buffer stress. I can do that today, and now I'm able to accomplish all of those specific goals I want, which essentially hit its pinnacle when I did a sprint triathlon that I never thought that I would ever be able to do, and actually really enjoyed it and did pretty well. I was very, very happy, right? So what I'm saying right now is a lot of things that we have that are far off goals. If you told that sick 17-year-old kid that I was, that he was going to be doing sprint triathlons one day and you know speaking for 10 plus hours a day that that would be a possibility, never in my wildest imagination. But put it out there, put it out there, and you don't have to accomplish that tomorrow. You're simply going to take that next step. And nothing that I do is literally this far off thing that no one else can do. Because again, I have no special skills. I have no superpowers, nothing like that. What I've done is really listened, try to keep myself open, and learn from all of the great naturopaths and all of the great Vages and Ayurveda, all of the great practitioners and and healers and motivational-based people and philosophers that have come many, many thousands of years or throughout the last couple thousands of years. And what I've done is try to assimilate that and understand the process. And I'm trying to pass that process on to you because I know right now that whatever you're dealing with, we're all dealing with something, right? We're all dealing with something that we could improve upon or we haven't reached our full potential. 
What I want you to think about is this. You don't have to accomplish that goal tomorrow. What you need to do is take that first step, lay out the action plan of what's the first step, what's the second. You might not know the third, fourth, fifth, or sixth because they haven't presented themselves to you yet because they only present themselves to you when you've taken that first step, you've taken that second step. And that's why, although I love the law of attraction and that you must set out your goals, you must visualize what you want in life, but you have to believe. That's the big thing. You have to feel it. You have to believe it. You will begin to see it. You will begin to believe it, and you will finally achieve it when you begin to take that first step. That's what it's all about. Hopefully, today's show was helpful. Really enjoy these motivation and mindset Mondays. For the most part, they really are for me. I need this as much as anyone else. And this is really, it fuels me. It gives me the fire that I need to move on for one more week. Hopefully, it was helpful for you as well. If so, please, as always, do share this with anyone you believe it could help. Before you go, I wanted to share a personal story with you. The real reason I began to get well finally is because I figured out what was wrong with me. And that might seem pretty obvious, but I went from doctor to doctor for over two years before discovering at-home functional medicine lab testing. These are the labs that enabled me to finally figure out what was wrong with my hormones, blood sugar, electrolytes, and gut health. And once I knew what was wrong, I could then follow a proven plan in order to rebalance my body from the inside out. This is why I believe so strongly in functional medicine lab testing and why I've made it my mission to share these labs with the world. Now at equa.life, you can order an at-home lab test or lab bundle for you and your family and be able to complete it within the week. Plus, the equal life difference is that you're not left to try to read and figure out these labs on your own. We explain what your lab numbers mean, what they mean in the much bigger picture, and then how to go about rebalancing your body in order to heal. To see our full selection of lab tests or to set up a free lab selection call to find out what labs may be best for you, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. And do remember, we ship these all over the world. To find out more and to set up your free lab selection call, simply head on over to equa.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs. Labs.